Good morning, good morning. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas to everyone. I decided to just go live for a little bit and bring you not a sermon but a thought entitled, Whoever Takes the Sun. And I'm coming from John 3, 16 through 18 this morning. Gospel of John chapter 3, verses 16 through 18 reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Amen, amen. Again, this is not a sermon, but this is a thought entitled, Whoever Takes the Son, S-O-N. John 3.16 is the milestone scripture of the Christian faith. Along with the model prayer in Matthew 6 and Psalm 23, every Sunday school student had to, rem to memorize John 3.16. So I thought it very appropriate to bring a thought this morning from this text because Christmas is about Christ and John 3.16 is about Christ uh, being one of the best gifts that can be given. This is the time of year saying for most people are frantically trying to think of the right gift to give. But praise God, there is a gift of the Son that was given to the world thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. And this gift keeps on giving and is appropriate for all ages, all genders, all time periods. So whoever believes and puts their faith in Jesus Christ, amen, John 3.18 says that he who believes in him are not judged or condemned, but instead has eternal life. And although they die, I mean, uh, have eternal life, and although they die on this side of glory, they live again with the Lord on the other side. That's good news. And all of this, Amen. It's a result of receiving the gift that God gave because of his love for the world. And there's a story that illustrates the value of receiving the gift of Jesus Christ. And this story is entitled, Whoever Takes the Son. And it goes like this. It said, many years ago, there was a very wealthy man who shared a passion for art collecting with his son. They had priceless works adorning the walls of their family estate. One day, the nation was at war, and the young man left to serve his country. After only a few short weeks, his father received a telegram that his son had died. Distraught and lonely, the old man faced the upcoming Christmas holiday with sadness. You see, the joy of the season had suddenly vanished with the death of his son. And on Christmas morning, a knock on the door awakened this depressed old man. He opened the door, and a soldier with a large package in his hand greeted the man and he said I was a friend of your son I was the one he was rescuing when he died may I come in for a few moments I have something to show you the soldier mentioned that he was an artist and then gave the old man the package it was a portrait of this man's son and though the world would never consider it the work of a genius, the painting featured the young man's face and striking detail. Overcome with emotion, the man hung the portrait over the fireplace, pushing aside millions of dollars worth of art. His task completed, the old man sat down in his chair and he spent Christmas gazing at the gift he had been given. It was the painting of his son 
and it soon became his most prized possession. Half a year later, the old man died, and the art world waited with anticipation for the upcoming auction. Because according to the will of this old man, all the artworks would be auctioned on Christmas Day, the day that he had received the greatest gift, which was his son. The day soon arrived, and all the art collectors from all around the world they gathered to bid on some of the world's most spectacular paintings. They realized that dreams would be fulfilled that day. And the auction began with a painting that was not of in, on anyone's museum list. You see, it was the painting of this old man's son that the soldier had delivered to him. The auctioneer asked for the opening bid. But the room was silent. Who will open the bidding with $100? No one still spoke. Finally, someone said, Who cares about that old painting? It's just a picture of his son. Let's move on to the good stuff. The auctioneer responded, No, no, no. We have to sell this one first. Now, who will take the son. Finally, a neighbor of the old man offered $50. That's all I have. I knew the boy, so I like to have it. The auctioneer said, going once, going twice, gone. The gavel failed. Chills filled the room, and someone exclaimed, Now we can bid on the real treasures. The auctioneer looked at the room filled with the people and announced that the auction was over. Everyone was stunned. Someone spoke up and said, What do you mean? It's over. We didn't come here for a painting of someone's son. There are millions of dollars worth of art here. What's going on? The auctioneer replied, It's very simple. According to the will of the Father, whoever takes the Son gets it all. And the message, saints, is the same on this Christmas morning. Because of the Father's love, whoever, whosoever, takes the gift of the Son gets it all. And so when we accept Jesus who is God's son, who is the Father's son, we get peace that passes all understanding. We get joy that this world cannot take away. We get companionship because the God that Jesus, the God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit never leaves us. We get forgiveness of sin. We get love when nobody can separate us from the love of Christ, we get an inheritance reserved in heaven. We get answered prayers. We get a friend, hallelujah, that sticks closer than a brother. We get life insurance, saints, that we will never die, but we have eternal life. We get someone that tells us to stand still, he will fight our battles. We get an advocate who will defend us to the Father. We get someone that we can cast all of our cares upon, and we get direct access to God the Father. We have available to us someone who never sleeps, not slumber. We have someone who is the bread of life, who is water when we are thirsty, food when we are hungry. We get someone who is just our all and all. Now when Jesus was born in the city of David in Bethlehem, Ham, he was born in a manger with the animals of the day because there was no room for him in the inn, in the I-N-N. But my prayer for each of you that's listening to me. 
that you won't be like the innkeepers and not have room in your life for Jesus. Even if one time you went away and you prepared a room for Jesus in your heart. But if you find today that you have evicted Jesus because of the things of this world has been replaced as your priority, you need to make room for Jesus again. You need to rededicate and recommit your life to him. So no matter what you have to do, make room for Jesus. Make room for the Son. Because if not, at the end, the E-N-D, Jesus will declare unto you, there is not room for you. Because when he went away to prepare a place for others, there was not one prepared for you. Because you did not accept and believe and receive the gift of the Son. So saints, there is still room at the cross where we first received our sight because we are well because we all was once blind but now we can say now we see we can say once i was lost but now i'm found so today i urge you get in a hurry if you have never done for before claim the gift of jesus claim the Son of God. This is not a sermon, but this is a thought on this Christmas morning. Merry Christmas, one and all. And for those who are celebrating a birthday along with Jesus Christ, happy birthday along with Merry Christmas. I love you. And again, this is not a sermon, but it's a thought wishing everyone have received the gift of Jesus Christ that keeps on giving and giving and giving. God bless you.